Pratip has a question. Can we assume play of desires in oneness by inference? And just below it in duality, desires appear. Although no knowledge is possible in oneness, the play of desires is not an inference. It is our direct experience. Now, to say that play of desires is happening in oneness or below it is meaningless because everything is happening in oneness and everything appears in duality. The desires are aborted at the level of mind in duality. Yes, it, it is happening totally in the illusion because that which aborts the desires is also an illusion. The, it is not correct to say that the desire is aborted. We say that the action is aborted because the desire is already there. If it is detected by the intellect, the desire is already there. Now, in an unaware person, the desire will result in an action, more or less. In the aware person, the desire is not really aborted, it is postponed. Today I won't do it. This is not important to do today. It is unnecessary to do. As soon as the awareness is there, these thoughts replace the thoughts of the desire generated by the desire. It is always postponed. So what is happening at the level of oneness is there is a potential, there is a possibility of these desires to appear and they keep appearing. Please note my words, they keep appearing, never stop. Because that which never starts, never stops. So endless, endless desires. The, if you try to find out the source of the desires, it is the vibration itself. The primordial vibration is the primordial desire of the existence. If there is no vibration in the existence, there won't be any illusion, there won't be any manifestation, nothing will appear. So even in oneness we can assume the latent desires are there. They are manifested as thoughts in a human being. Actually they are being manifested in everything. When the seed grows into a sapling, a plant, it is nothing but the desire. When the moon is orbiting the earth, nothing but desire. So ancient people saw this and they called it the will. Some people, religious people, they call it the will of God. In Tantra we call it the desire of the Devi. Devi is nothing but desire. So it is manifested at various levels and it will never go away. To think that I can abort a desire by simply becoming aware is a mistake. I can abort the action. Yes, that is possible. But there are consequences. This abortion of the action also is an action and therefore it has consequences. These consequences are not in our control. The action is in our control. Everybody knows from the BG. BG says this, that don't worry about the consequences. Worry about what you do. That's all is in our control. The appearance of the desire is not in our control. and The consequences are not in our control. That's why we say it's a play. What is awareness doing is sequencing the desires. What do we want? Not suppression of the desire. We want resequencing. That which is unnecessary, that which is, you see, imposed from outside, which is not my allocation for this life, must be postponed. That which is necessary is my allocation, must be done. That desire must be fulfilled. Not by hook or crook. <laughs> In an intelligent way so that we can avoid the consequences as much as possible. Desire is generated at the non-physical level, so it is possible to fulfill it there. But remember that there will be endless numbers, endless num amount of it. They are hidden in the fabric of oneness. Actually, there is nothing else in oneness except this will, except this desire. The vibration is the desire. It has taken many forms. All the experience can be seen as experience of desiring, not my desire. Obviously there is no me, so there is no my desire. It is the desire of the whole, we can say, or nobody's desire, nobody's desire. And this dance is there. So yes, it may look like that there is a will of me, free will, you can say choice, he is using the word choice, and I have a choice. But we know there is no me. This choice is also an illusion, like he said. But the, this choice is also of the Devi. The choice is also of the oneness, the existence. It is not really a choice. It is simply a loop. There is a delay. That's all.
something is seen as more important then that is chosen automatically and continues it is very simple it is very mechanical thing because it's simply vibration it gives an illusion that there is something which is choosing and because of the identification an ordinary ignorant person will say i chose i became aware then i chose the desire no nothing like this happens so hopefully that answers the question everything can be seen as a desire even the tiniest moment in the existence is nothing but a desire it has become very very complicated and uh, sophisticated in case of humans and there is identification with it added drama with it and uh, this whole evolution is a desire actually whole evolution is a desire and the only useful desire that we have <laughs> in the whole existence is to know my true nature one out of infinite rest are useless one is most important from the point of view of uh, the oneness everything is happening perfectly it will say i am perfect everything is happening perfect that is also our direct experience if the if the human factor is introduced then yes some things should not happen <laughs> but the illusion does not care the maya devi does not care it just goes on and on and on so it is only our ignorance that is causing misery and happiness and all everything is actually as good as it should be okay pardeep is saying can you give some advices for mastering and delivering multi layered teachings for example handling knowledge at many levels such as oneness duality mind desires and today mix the compare and compare knowledge at different levels levels there is no problem at all you can compare you see do not mix you can compare layers of knowledge it's not levels of knowledge not a problem but yes yeah, you need to take special care when you're talking about something which is valid only at one level totally invalid at another level so what do i do i describe it in three levels sometimes not always you see when, whenever there is a chance of confusion you should describe it at three levels first is the level of oneness obviously non duality second is the level of duality third is the level of illusion whatever we call as relative relative truth relative level transactional reality these three levels there are many more but uh, you see we don't worry too much about it these three are important so you start from the top level there is nothing in oneness there is nobody there there is only potential and there is this emptiness and everybody knows this thing is a standard <laughs> in duality you tell the truth what is true what is false in transactional level you tell the false what is practical <laughs> what is useful very simple you see if you if you make this habit of talking in three levels three say, three times same thing can be described in three ways then you will be safe yes mixing can happen sometimes unavoidable but uh, in the newcomers they will mix it most of the time i say you are not the body next day um, you are all the experiences also now they are confused yesterday he said i am not the body today how come i became the body the body is an experience isn't it so then you need to clarify it look not this body i am all the bodies all the creatures all the mountains and clouds also <laughs> they are also my body so this is how we clear up things it is best not to use the words of duality in non duality like we do not say that i am all the bodies at the level of non duality we say that i am all the experience all that latent potential i am that or we simply say i am the vibration and then there is less chance of confusion then we drop the i also we say there is existence and it is the experiencer it is also the experience and we say goodbye to non duality because then nothing much to talk there hardly anything to talk about non duality then the duality has uh, mind blowing stuff but the really useful stuff happens in the illusion the, the other knowledge is very simple it is it is uh, easy now the real confusion happens in the <laughs> Uh, illusion now i am this existence i am the brahman uh, and i am the experience and what should i do now you see what has happened here no you are not the doer yes but i need to get up in the morning and do something you see confusion confusion has happened so we can clear that by saying that look this body mind needs to get up and do something yes 
and it will be done it is not doing it is happening so what should happen okay this should happen that should happen so on you see change the language when the language is impure like we usually say that i am this person i am the guru you are the student so on you see that is the transaction level now but while teaching i say i am the experiencer i am not any experience oh that much is okay next day i say i am the whole existence everything is me now how many eyes do you have any intelligent person will ask i am counting since last one week you said at least 10 times i am this and i am that how many eyes why don't you settle in one thing you see don't confuse yourself tell me who you are <laughs> for once and for all so when you mix the language like this it is confusing so that's why i think it is there in the english videos or not i forgot but there is a clock of i in the hindi videos which has only one hand which is the i keeps rotating at least i think it is there in the english videos also keeps rotating i think it is shown in the form of a cloud in the english videos everything is me there everything so it causes a lot of confusion in the precise language is important mary is asking everything is happening in oneness but appears in duality would you please explain more about this see there is a dividing tendency in the mind which divides the oneness into two so actually this, this division does not do anything simply appears that uh, everything has become dual the first division is the experience and the experiencer they never separate when I mean, the mind has a tendency to separate them somehow and then the experience is nothing i mean the experiencer is unseen and manifested so it is left alone it is forgotten and the mind turns to the experience it divides it into many kinds normally we uh, count three kinds the world the body and the mind but then it goes ahead and divides that also so divides uh, till it cannot handle it this is this is how you know everything is turned into dual the hot and cold is actually when mind divides it into hot and cold love and hate is actually when darkness and light is actually when so it is all divisions and there is some reason for that you know, the reason is reason is survival or whatever automated processes but the dividing tendency is the basic tendency of the mind that causes divisions in non duality that is what we know why does it happen we say it happens because of necessity this is what is necessary there are all possibilities and if the, if there is no dividing tendency in those possibilities nothing will appear the experience will not be meaningful eventually you will see that nothing was divided it was all an illusion so the oneness never became two never does it only an appearance like a dream our mistake is thinking that this duality is the truth and that is our mistake not realizing the illusory and momentary nature of this dividing tendency it is there accept it know that i am one very simple paramjit is saying desires can never be fulfilled absolutely right however those who are in the business of desire fulfillment they don't worry at all about it if they are fulfilled they will be worried now what should i do now there is nothing in my eternal life to do anything so fortunately they are not fulfilled continue doing the play never stops this is you can say a fortunate thing because what will you do <laughs> all all your desires are fulfilled you are no longer there actually because what are you you are a product of a desire you are a bundle of desires that's all the causal body is actually vibration so if they are silenced there is nothing and you can imagine if all the desires are fulfilled and imagine the eternal time the infinite time that means is already fulfilled it's already done so we should get only complete nothingness but what do we get we get tremendous amount of activity which simply means they will never be fulfilled paramjit is absolutely right and that's what we want <laughs> we don't want the play to stop no creature in the universe wants this we want it to continue and we want it to continue according to our desire that's what we want which will also never happen so there is a twist in the play to surrender to that which is going to happen that which is happening we observe it with complete detachment and then it is fine and then whatever is happening is fine if the desire is fulfilled very nice if it is not fulfilled not my desire <laughs> the grapes are sour he says so this is how we handle the desires even if they are unlimited 
is possible to handle them.